and welcome back to the shift another episode live for you on Streamyard, wherever you're listening or watching this podcast uh we are giving you a fresh new episode nick and is with me i am francisco rojas uh nick first and foremost how are you doing over there i'm doing okay i wouldn't say great it was a total nightmare before the show. I I, I think you know. It was a total you nightmare. Wanna, you want to vent? Just get it off your chest. Yeah, let me vent. Tell the, tell the, go ahead, go ahead. So I usually have this light in front of me, right? So you can actually see me. So I'm in total darkness right now. To me, this is total darkness. Unreal. It starts out, my ring light, it just started it, it just started spazzing. That's literally what happened. It Like, I plugged it in, I hit the button, and it just started, like, blinking, blinking, and then went away. And I tried to plug it in again, and then it didn't work again. It kept blinking, blinking, and then and then shut off. So my light's broken. So I have I have makeshift lamps around here so you can actually see me, and we're not in total darkness. But you know we're here. We're here. The microphone works. Yeah, the, you the stream's look, working. Bro. At least that's, that's working. Fun. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the important things like the stream actually being able to work yeah. so we can post the podcast. You know, hopefully, <laughs> like I said before this episode, obviously we all all we appreciate our viewers on YouTube. But you know, if you decide just to listen to the podcast, just week, listen. We're not, we're not against that. We're a hundred percent not against that. Just this week, but next week we'll be back. We'll be beautiful on the screen. Look, my lighting's not great. Like, look, it's eight twenty nine p.m. here on the East Coast. Like, it's dark as hell out. It's uh, I got, th- <laughs> I got three lights going in here, and it's not terrible. But you can tell in the background on me that it looks a tiny bit dark. It doesn't look great either. So, Nick, I think we're both in the same boat, but I'm here for you. Yeah, I You're here for me. We have each other. Yeah, we're both here. I, you know, you just won't be able to see my pretty face. You know, that's all. You know, it's a face for radio, I guess, right? I mean, that's – You said it, not it is me. What it is. Hey, you I did it, say it. Me. I did say it. But, yeah, well, we got a great show planned, you know, other than oh, we my do. light – Oh, we 100%. Other than my light problems, my my issues, well, we'll get to some some real baseball issues. <laughs> yes, we will. No, a lot of you know, a lot of fun stuff to talk about, there man, is. opening week. This is pretty much, at this point, it's Thursday, April 6th. Uh, this is – it's been a, a, just about a week since opening day. I think this is perfect uh, to recap uh, kind of what we saw opening week. Um, some uh, We're going to definitely get to some overreactions. Uh, a few prospects that have, uh, you know, played uh, pretty well. Grayson Rodriguez uh, got the call up for the Orioles. That's always exciting, especially for a franchise uh, like the Orioles um, and had a pretty good outing. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to Jordan Walker's first home run, first major league binger uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals. And then we have to get to the big news, uh, minor league uh, uh, and uh, MLB um, came to an agreement on a new CBA. That's big, historical. Huge historical uh, for minor league baseball. And it's great to see, uh, you know, as a baseball fan, uh, we're going to get into that, um, what uh, that entails for the minor league uh, CBA. And uh, Nick, I know you'll be able to speak on that a little more being a minor league guy. So we'll get to that. Um, And then we'll get to some other, just to round out the show, we're going to get to a few uh, little tidbits, um, you know, from the St. Louis Cardinals uh, and in the minor leagues in the, in the Padres uh, farm system, a certain superstar, uh, had a feud with, I guess a feud, if you want to call it, with, with <laughs> another minor league player. Um, and then we'll get to a noteworthy statistic uh, for a player that has a bit of an underrated career, has had a bit of under, under or underrated career for the last decade and, uh, you know, and a half. So we're going to get to that. So definitely a fun show today. Um, Nick, obviously this show being the shift, we have to talk about uh, the new rules. Um, Because that's pretty much that's been the talk, especially um, in the mainstream and mainstream sports, whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's any of the the big networks there. When it it comes to baseball, maybe they were talking about the World Baseball Classic um, when it was Japan in the U.S. But since then, really, the talk's been the new rules, Nick. It's been all about the new rules. Um, It's all it's been. It's all been the pitch clock and the shift and. Um, the stolen bases, how many stolen bases are we going to get? You know, Ricky Henderson's going to, you know, come from, come from the, uh, you know, from the depths of whatever. And uh, Glaber Torres, by the way, leads uh, the majors in freaking stolen bases. So how about that, Nick? Um, but let's talk about these new rules. Um, I want to get your thoughts so far. I mean, we had the Guardians and Mariners two hours and four minute game. I think that's the fastest one so far. So what were your thoughts overall so far on the new rules? Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying them. Um, I kind of had a head start um, on most people just being around the minor leagues a little bit. So I was, I've was i been kind of used to it. 
Um, seeing, you know, the game move a little quicker, seeing a little more stolen bases, seeing a little more offense, right? And, you know, if you're going through some of the numbers, um, according to StatCast, the pace, some of the pace numbers, right? Uh, so we're, we're counting to average time in between pitches. Last year in 2022 was 23.1. It's down to 18.6 seconds, Francisco, this year. So that's, that's a significant increase. If you're looking some of the years back, 23.7, 23.2, it's hung right around that 23 second mark. It's dropped all the way to 18. So that's five seconds. You're not, you know, fixing your glove. You're not playing with your hat, right? You're not doing all this stuff. You're not doing a Dubal so, Herrera or no Mark Garcia. Yeah. Part. Oh. Good, my goodness. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's great. And, you know, the average uh, stolen base attempt per game now is 0.77 up from 0.65, uh, I believe, huge. last year. 6.7 last year. So, 0.67 right. no. last year. So, it, that's a gina- gigantic increase. Yeah. So, I think it's I think it's working. Um, some of the players, I think, are still getting used to it. We knew this was going to take time, right? We knew that some of the new rules being implemented were going to take time for players to get used to and you know some of them aren't gonna like it and I, I i can tell you from this from experience that pitchers weren't don't really didn't like it in the minors and these are younger guys mostly in the minors so if you're moving the, these rules to the majors with guys who have been set in their ways for years and years it's going to be an adjustment so i think the players are still adjusting as a fan man these games are moving i i, I don't oh, mind I it i don't mind but for the regular season the playoffs, yeah, I, I playoffs. I feel like we should maybe go maybe NFL style, maybe switch up the overtime. You know how they change. I agree the with you, one hundred percent. Maybe change up the pitch clock rules, give them a little more time, etc. Um, but I think for the regular season, um, baseball needed to do this, and it's working. Yeah, I know. I totally agree with you, man. Like, I definitely want to kind of piggyback uh, off of what you said about these games are moving. Like, I'm sitting there and like. By the end of hour one, usually, right? Usually, obviously, I mean, you do the math in your head. It's three innings per hour. It equals a a nine-inning game uh, in baseball as long as it's a nine-inning game for the most part, right? And usually by, like, the end of the hour, man, it's, like, almost the top of the fifth. And then, (laughs) you know, by by the end of hour two, it's, like, it's the the top of the eighth, you know, maybe bottom of the seventh. And I like the pace, man. I I can't lie. Like, I, I... I like, I, I, you know, I, I like the way it was before without the clock. Like I, you know, we, I mean, you, we love baseball and this is supposed to, to bring in uh, some of these, uh, these newer fans. I, I, you know what, I, what I really want to know, I want to know from any of our listeners, if there's any listeners out there that are truly like super duper duper casual baseball fans, are you truly, is this truly making or uh, making you watch more baseball now? Um, with these new rules, with the shift, um, with the, uh, with, with the pitch timer, um, with stolen bases being up so far, is it truly making a difference for you as a fan? Because look, the diehards, uh, like me, you, Nick, we're going to watch these games and, um, we're, we're going to enjoy them no matter what, no matter if they go four hours or two hours, whether, you know, they're five hours, um, like we're, we're going to enjoy them. But at the same time, Nick, like I, I can't lie to you. Like I, I, I like the pace. Like yeah. I like the pace. Like I, yeah. I like it a lot, man. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? This pace feels good. It, it kind of feels good to have shorter games than usual. The only thing that stinks about it is like when you're watching a game at home on the couch, you, you have to keep paying it. You can't really run out yeah. to the other room and get a snack. That's the only. Right. That's the only issue I, I found so far with these rules. But like um, other sports are like that too, though. Like yeah. basketball. I mean, yeah, you have your halftime and you have, you know, right. you got to go during the commercial break. Right. Okay. Just, just let me be quick during the commercial though, break. Man. I mean, whatever. Do. Like, exactly. I don't know. I go ahead, but I just wanted to interject there. Yeah. No, I, I, I listen, that, that's the only flaw I've really found in it right now. Um, it's listen, I, I think this is going to work. Um, I don't think you're going to see the numbers increase or decrease um w- with new fans or um people leave like people if you're a fan of baseball you're still gonna watch um even if you may not like the new rules but you know i think it's still gonna take some time i, I don't think we're gonna see gigantic drastic numbers of you know the ratings going way up uh the interest level being sparked even more i think it's gonna take some time um because you, you know these are these are new um i think it will garner a little bit of interest in, in the beginning so people will be like oh 
I want to see what I want to see how how the games change. How how is it quicker? Um, because baseball, I've always known it as a as a as a slow game. So I, I think you're gonna, you're gonna have to wait a little bit to see kind of that take effect. I think it's just way too early. We're only a week into the season, week into these new rules officially, not counting spring training. So I think give it some time. Um, and, and and let's let's see how it plays out. Let's see how the narrative is because we saw we saw Bryce Harper on Sunday Night Baseball basically say how much he does not like the new rules uh, and the, and the pace of play with the pitch timer. So um, just, I think you know we still we're still in a wait and see type of period here um, mm-hmm. with, with with the pitch timer with some of these new rules. I'm fine with with the shift be, being banned. I'm cool with that, and I I like seeing the stolen bases. Man, makes the game more fun. Um, who doesn't love seeing stolen bases and, you know, yeah. they're up now they're up. So, um, it, it's, I, I think so far so good players still need to get used to it. Um, it's going to take some time before they get on board. Yeah. And I think, um, I also want to go back to the stolen base things. I think, and Theo Epstein talked about this, I believe, uh, on Jason Stark and, um, Doug Glanville's, uh, athletic podcast. He spoke about, um, it's not even just so much about, the stolen bases, like the amount of stolen bases. It's, it's about the attempts. I think the, the fans, the fans like the, like the, like the act, the, 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 uh, you know, players trying to steal bases more than, you know, uh, players, you know, stealing the base. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think right. the, the whole act of trying to steal the base, like that action in that, w- within that, uh, within that type of play is, is the real thing. Um, and there, and from what he, I think he, he mentioned that they're up. I mean, all, I mean, obviously if stolen bases are up and the attempts are probably up too, which I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier. So it's, so according to CBS sports, this is, this is according to an article on CBS, right? Mm-hmm. So this year stolen bases attempts per game, 0.77 stolen base success rate, 83%, 83% compared to last year, 75% stolen, stolen base success rate and a 0.67 stolen base attempt per Per, per game the mlb is currently on pace for 3107 stolen bases this year and that's like how much is that up from last year last year it pace? was tw- it was at, it was 2400 that's around great, 20 man. close close to 2500 closer to 2500 yeah i mean we're not so, uh yeah yeah no it's i i think it's i think that's great i i i mean we we discussed this on past shows like man I, I, I love the Jimmy Rollins of the world. I really enjoyed your Sean Figgins of the world. Um, I, I enjoy, you know, your Juan Pierre's like, Juan. who didn't love, who yeah, didn't little, love a little Juan Pierre, you know, so beatsters, the, man. Right. Putting a little sack bunt down the line, uh, getting on first base, you know, they're going to steal a bag or two. Like those players were fun. And hopefully, hopefully they come back. I don't, I don't expect Glaber Torres to be that guy. I mean, look, you look at his, his sprint speed. It's in the 31, 31st percent percentile, according to Statcast. So like, I don't expect Glaber Torres really to, to, to be that type of guy, but who knows, man, who knows? It's, yeah, uh, we, it's I, we exciting. need more Billy Hamilton's, right? We need oh, yeah, more Billy Hamilton's man. in the come league. On. It's, it's, it's fun, man. Seeing, seeing the speedsters run around the bases. You need, you need those players that were, uh, that were used just to come in and steal bases. I missed yeah. that. Like you used to have pitch runners. Yeah. You said oh. pitch runners, man. Like, come on. You said those guys. Going, right. Yeah. Oh. They, they wouldn't, they, they would get five at bats per season, but they would, they'd be stealing 20 bases because, oh. you know, because, uh, you know, whoever Ozzy Guillen and Charlie Manuel needed someone to, I don't know why I mentioned those two, but they yeah, came to mind. Like, doesn't matter. Know, they were in the, the, the age in the mid 2000s. Uh, so. You know, the guy on second, seventh, eighth, ninth inning representing the tying run, slow guy, a power hitter hits a double, right? You bring in the pinch runner to bring him around home, and it's right. it's cake. It's oh, it's, it's so much fun. I, yeah. I, I love I love when, it, when you get to run on the bases a little bit, man. It's it's so much fun to watch, and it, it just adds a little more excitement, a little more intrigue to the to those those stress innings in the seventh, eighth and ninth, right. And even in extra innings as well, having uh, now the ghost runner, a little bit of a different story. We can talk about that, but uh, I just, is I like, still, is it still, they're still doing it this year, right? I believe so. Right. Yeah. They don't need it now that, that, that the games are going yeah. faster. Like they don't need it. Now I didn't even, yeah. I don't know why I never thought of that. Like they don't, they don't need the ghost. Right. Runner. It's still this year. Right. I believe I would think. Correct. That's what it's I'm still that's in what there. I'm yeah. Saying. yeah. So it's so, like, yeah, so I think Nick, just before we move on to our overreactions here, overall we like it. We like the new rules. 
How they've been thumbs up. We're, we're on a thumbs up as of now. Now, right. when we get to the playoffs, I might go down down. The, where was my camera? Right there. Might go down that way. Yeah, I, no, yeah. Just to wrap that <laughs> up, like they they uh, they need to figure that out. Hopefully, they can figure that out before the postseason starts. Yeah. I don't know if that's a thing they had to get done before the regular season started or whatever. Hopefully, they can because that's not going to be a good thing. I don't want. Uh, you know, we we watched it in the. Uh, the I just remember this just because obviously we watch all the Phillies games. Like um, Garrett Cole. Uh, his day ended because he had a pitch clock violation and that was his last batter. I mean, it was going to be his last batter anyway, but it's just the principle of like, you know, those things uh, and at bat shouldn't be ending on a pitch clock violation in the playoffs. Yeah. It cannot happen in the playoffs. No. We, we, we can't have that. These um, high stress games, you can't have stupid violations like that happen. Like that, a yeah. lot on the line, a lot of money on the line, uh, a yeah. lot riding on, on careers. Like, no, I, I think I think this is a great regular season rule, and I said that from the beginning. It, regular season, this is this is you know there's 162 games during the year. You need to speed things up a little bit um, because we know how attention spans have have shortened and decreased. So yes. I think regular season, this so far so good. Postseason, I think that's where you want to look at modifying some of these changes. I agree. All right, so let's get to our. This is this is the fun part of the pod. Man. <laughs> I was really looking forward to this. Um, I, I love that you've come to the table. Uh, with four of these as well we're talking about over come on look and if you're one of those people and we appreciate all our listeners we appreciate all the people watching on youtube but if you're one of those people oh well it's early early in the season you can't well who who cares that we know it's early in the season okay if someone yes brian anderson has like a five million ops okay (laughs) who cares let's have some fun all right it Let's have some fun. So See, it's all Nick, it's it's the, it's the rules. It's with the rules. It's with the show. We're gonna have some fun. Yes, we're gonna make all we're gonna make some people angry. I know we are, but you know. Yeah, but it's that's the fun part, man. It's overreaction. It's the first week of the season. This is what everyone does. We all overreact. MLB Network does this too, okay? And we love MLB Network is great. Great analysts on there. They do this because it's fun. You have to have something. So let's talk about our overreactions, Nick. I'm going to start with you, bud. Let's uh, right. give me give me your first overreaction. I told, I told you. Yeah, go ahead. I told you before the show that mine were going to be a little outside the box, right? Love that. But, so, all right, here we go. So this doesn't even have to do with the team. Ready? Overreaction or not an overreaction? Umpires will be so bad this year, they are going to switch to robo-umps next season. It's an overreaction in the fact that I think people give umpires more crap than they need to get. Um, I know it's a whole thing. It's like we watch every game and we say, oh, well, the umpires, so look how bad they are, blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it. Angel Hernandez, not good. C.B. Buckner, not good. And it's funny part is C.B. Angel Hernandez isn't even one of the worst umpires in the league. And maybe that speaks more to how bad the umpires are. But um, you know what, man? Like, it, just speaking to your question, that's not going to happen. It's more of a like, statement. More of a statement. Yeah, it's no, it's it, I, I love it. I I love what I love I love that question. I love the way you phrase that. But it's it's not going to happen. Um th- are they going to be great this year? Maybe not, but uh it's not they're not going to automatically go to the ABS system or robots um next year. It's going to be at least a couple of years in my right. opinion, but I think it's definitely trending towards that way. I mean, where where do you sit on this? I think it's an overreaction. I I, yeah, I, I I do think it's I do think it's an overreaction. I don't think we're there yet. I still like having a human as an umpire, right? I I get you want to be so accurate, but the human element I I still enjoy. Now, <laughs> CB Buckner and and Angel Hernandez, I mean they've been brutal at times. I mean it's it, they, they've been they've been awful. Um, and I I think you know some of these guys should be stripped of not being behind the plate. And, right. you know, and move maneuvering these crews because sometimes it's just so bad. I mean, CB Buckner in that Texas Philly game was un- oh, unbelievably was bad. It, I mean, I think it was the top of the fourth inning. Brandon Marsh had two runners on. Uh, he, he had, it was, it was a full count of the great at bat and it was ball four. It was way inside and CB Buckner rang them, rang them up and Brandon Marsh couldn't believe it. So I don't, th- I think it's a little bit of overreaction still. Um, I think one day we will get there. Um, but I don't think it's going to be next. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to get to my my first one here, Nick. Uh, kind of an easy one, um, but also a compelling one because just how good they've been. Again, only a week, but um, 
just because they've been uh, number uh, you know top three in, in both runs scored and ERA pitching-wise overall. Now, we expected this from the Tampa Bay Rays. My question is, um, you know, are the, the, the Rays the best team in baseball? I mean, look, they're the only undefeated team still, I believe. Um, and, again, they have the most runs scored in baseball right now. Um, and they have the second lowest ERA in ba- baseball right now, right next to the Twins are at 190. The Rays are at two. We're not, I think neither of us are surprised that the Rays are that high uh, and, or that, that low in ERA, I guess, uh, speaking to that. Uh, but Nick, are the Rays the best team in baseball? It's, I'm going to go no. I'm going to go no. Um, it's, a, it's an overreaction. Um, I'm not there yet with the Rays. Listen, they've, they've had a great start to the season. Great start to the season. Uh, they're undefeated. They're first in the standings, right? Six and zero. Um, I I still think the Yankees are better. I still think Toronto's better. They're all over five hundred. Yeah. It's just way way too early for me. Um, I listen. There, we. I think we talked about this in our in our preview episode um, when we did the AL and L East. Um, I think we both had the Rays finishing around third place in that Correct. division. Yeah, we were in we were the East. I think we were both saying they were they were third. I, I still believe that. Listen, it's April. It's April. I mean, it's so yeah. early in the year. So much can happen. So much can change. Listen, they are they're off to a great start. Great for the Rays. I think they they will definitely compete for a playoff spot. They're not going to be the by the end of the season. No way. Take it to the bank. The Rays will not be the best team in baseball and not have the best record. I, I agree. It, it's too um, early. Yeah, I agree. And before we get to your next one, uh, I mean, Luke Rayleigh is their leading hitter right now. Three homers. That's tied for the most of baseball right now. He has a 270 OPS plus. Um, I don't expect Luke Rayleigh to be an MVP type of player. Uh, Wander Franco's up to a hot start, and so is Randy Arosa. Randy, you expect that from those guys. But I don't think Luke Rayleigh is just going to keep, uh, you know, hitting dingers and bombs for the Rays. All right, give me your next one. All right, my next one, I'm going to go with, all right, Giancarlo Stanton will hit over 35 home runs this year. Ah. <sighs> Not an overreaction. You know why? He's been consistent uh, the last couple of years. Um, I think he dealt with some injury problems, I believe, in 2019, uh, maybe 2020 as well. Maybe even last year. He dealt with some last He played in 110 games last year. He still had 31 bombs. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what though, Nick? I mean, he did play 139 games a couple of years ago. I'm looking at his numbers right now. He hit 35. Um. I don't think it's an overreaction to say that. I know he's what he is 33. He's only, he's 33. So I would say if he was over 35 and he was really having injury problems, I'd say maybe, uh, you know, let's calm down and he's going to hit 35 home runs, but you know what, man, as long as he stays healthy, I, I, you know, he has had some injury problems, but not enough to where I'd say, you know, he did it a couple of years ago in 2021 at 35. I'd give him this year. I, I can see. I can see that happening. I don't think that's an overreaction. Right. Still has the power. Right. I mean, we saw we saw the home run the other the other day. We hit 485 Four, feet. Yeah. I mean, my gosh. I mean, the, obviously the power is still there. As long as he stay, stays healthy, a hundred percent. I'm gonna say it's an overreaction just because uh, I don't think he's gonna hit 35 home runs. I think he'll hit under it. I think he could hit right around 30. I just don't trust him to stay on the field. I, I really don't. He's getting up there in age. He missed some time last season. Um, he has injury history. I think he hits right around 30. I think above 35, I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Um, hopefully, I'm, you know, maybe I'll be wrong. Uh, maybe I, I will be wrong, and he'll be able to play pretty much an entire season, maybe over 130 games. But I don't know. I don't think he's going to hit over 35 home runs. He could hit 33. And I would be correct because it's 200. <laughs> so like, that's where I'm going. Far. It's not I, that far off. It's not over 35. That was the question. That was the statement. Oh my God. Yeah. But it's, but if it's that he, close, it shouldn't be over. that much of an overreaction then. Yeah, it's no. three more and 36. No. Then like, come on. No, we're, we're going, he's going to get, he's going under 35. Under oh my 35. gosh. Fine. Like I, you made some good points there. I agree with you, the health <laughs> issues, but I could see it happening, but Come on, bro. If you're hitting, if you're going 33, it's not that much of an overreaction to get three more. 
I listen. He's got to show me. He hit 31 last year. That that's significant. It's four home gonna, runs. He always take that on Fanduel. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at over under on John Carlos Stanton's uh, home runs. Uh, right. But we'll check. Yeah, before, I'll, before I'll lay it down. That. I'll take the under. I'll take the under. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have some fun with that. Go. You do that. All right. So let's uh, let's get to my next one. Right. Um, come on, man. The, the guy's the best player on the planet. Um, I mean, he's so fun to watch. He has such a great personality. I mean, he's already uh, had a great start to the year. His stuff on the mound is nasty. Um, I mean, obviously what he does at the plate hits gazillion feet home runs. Um, he's probably the best play baseball player I've ever seen. Uh, I probably, uh, I don't, I don't think it's an understatement. I, talk about overreactions. I don't think it's an overreaction. Shohei Otani. Um, as long as he will stay healthy, Nick Earnshaw, he will win another AL MVP this year. No doubt about it. I'm going to say that's not an overreaction, not an overreaction. I mean, Shohei Otani is the best player in baseball. Um, he can win the MVP any year. If he's able to stay on the field, He's able to command his pitches, um, still hit for a good average, still hit for a little bit of power. I, yeah. I Why why can't he win the AL MVP again? I mean, the guy is superhuman. We saw what he did in the World Baseball Classic again this year. I feel like that was kind of really the coming of age moment for, for yeah. Shohei because, you know, we, we know we know how Major League Baseball can't market their players. I feel like right. now a lot more people know who Shohei Otani is after seeing him on that world stage and seeing what this guy can do at the plate and on the mound. The guy's ridiculous. You haven't seen anything that, like this guy in years. Oh, not an overreaction. If he could stay on the field, he's in the conversation every single year. Yeah, I don't and I don't really have much to add to that, Nick. I you you kind of, you know, spoke for me there. I think you spoke for spoke for all the baseball fans. Like we we all know um that, you know, he's I'm glad. I'm the voice of reason here. Yeah, I'm not, for for once, my gosh. No, I'm not giving you that freaking play. Give him the God voice of reason. No. Listen, <laughs> listen, all I'm hoping for also the Angels are four and two to start the year right there with Texas at four and two. I hope that they can continue to win. I think all the baseball fans look, I'm wearing an Angels jersey today. My Mike Trout City Connect. I'm hoping the Angels can make some noise. All right. Okay. All right. So Otani for MVP. It can definitely be a thing again. Give me your next one. All right. My next one, it's going to be Phillies related. Okay. The bullpen will cost the Philadelphia Phillies a playoff spot this year. Okay, so this will this goes along with mine, but that's no, that's honestly that's that's perfect. My my other one was going to be the Phillies lineup will be the reason they miss the playoffs. <laughs> um so I actually so so wait, what was your question that the Phillies bullpen will be the reason why they miss the playoffs? They miss the playoffs. I actually so I think if they do miss the playoffs, which I don't think they miss the playoffs, I think Harper coming back helps eventually. Um and I think that you know, with Reese out, I think they're eventually going to make a deal at the deadline for, for a hitter or two. Um, and I, we know how Don Browski is. Um, I think, I still think the pitching's strong. I like I, rotation. I think like Wheeler's not going to have the start he had. Like, I, Wheeler's still an elite pitcher. Nola's still an elite pitcher. Tom Walker's still a good pitcher. I don't think he's going to have that. You know, he's not going to, uh, he had a crappy debut with the Phils against the Yankees. Uh, but then you get Ranger Star- Suarez coming back and then, um, we saw what Matt Strom did. Matt Strom's going to go back to the bullpen once Suarez comes back and Bailey Falter will be your five. Um, I still like the bullpen. Like, I still like Soto, Kimbrell, um, Bilotti, Dominguez, Alvarado. Like, hopefully Brogdon's a big X factor for them this year, too. Um, I still like the bullpen. If anything, it will be the offense because of guys like Castellanos, who's been terrible to start the year. He's been god-awful. Um, Alec Bohm has been good, but again, can Alec Bohm put this together over a full season? Bryson Stott has had a good start to the season, but is Bryson Stott a, a batting type title type of player yet? I don't think so. Um, and they're really having trouble uh, with that, you know, that bottom part of the lineup really like besides Turner, um, Real Muto and Schwarber. Um, if for any, if anything, man, I don't think people are talking about it enough. Like, I think the lineup's going to be an issue, man. Like really. And like, obviously you can speak to this too, because we're both Phillies fans here, man. But I, I think it's going to be the lineup unless like Dombrowski can make some, some moves to the deadline. I think it's the lineup. It's a bigger, bigger deal. But- yeah, I, I think so. If we're going off mine, I'd say it's an overreaction for yours. I'd say not an overreaction just because the injuries, I mean, the injuries yeah. are, are really hurting them. And they're not having guys step up. I mean, Derek Hall, he got hurt the other day. I mean, Brandon Marsh, 
I mean, a little banged up. Like everybody seems to be getting hurt. I mean, probably not serious injuries like like Reese Hoskins or Bryce Harper, but right. Yeah, I mean, the the constant maneuvering the lineup, and you know Thompson bringing in Pache for for, for what? I know why. But you know what though? We talked about this. The Pache move was low risk, high reward. Yeah, but um, like, why are we? Pl- why are you playing? You want Brandon Marsh yeah. to be the everyday guy. You want guys like Bryson Stott to be the everyday guy. I agree. Bat them <laughs> against lefties and righties. It doesn't like like they're gonna be everyday players. You got to give them the reps against these guys. So. Yeah, I, I mean, when it when it comes to the Phillies, the lineup is starting to be a little bit concerning just because of the mixing and matching as well as the injuries. I mean, it's 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 a little bit concerning this early on. I get we're only a week into the season. Um, there's still a lot of a lot of baseball left. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to see guys step up. Castellanos getting paid a lot of money, um, and he has done absolutely nothing. Someone's really got to get his ass out of. Ben Simmons house. I mean, that's really what has to happen at he this point. That I, mean, that's, I mean, it it's, it's really, there's an aura over that house of just yeah. bad luck. Oh and, God. It's a black capital, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's, it's brutal. So yeah, I, I want to, you know, I I'm, I'm a little bit concerned uh, about, about the lineup. So de- definitely concerned there. I think the bullpen will be okay. I think Soto, I believe he had the visa issues, um, you know, Ranger Suarez coming back to the rotation, um, I, they'll get some guys back. I think the pitching is going to be okay. Um, it does feel like Nola and Wheeler, um, are, are still a little, they look a little tired still from last season. It feels like it feels yeah. like it's carried over, um, just because of how many innings they pitched last year. And it feels like they're running out of gas already, which is not a great sign, but no, I have, I have a good, I have a good feeling. Uh, the pitching will definitely come around the bats. That's what's going to be concerning. Um, can can they stop? Can Thompson stop mixing and matching so much? Um, and can the injuries help them not mix and match as much? So you so you agree with me? Yeah, I'm I'm okay. for once on your side on this. Oh, look at you! So I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Dude. I'm proud of you for coming to the to the bright side here. It's by not, the way, I it's rough. like I the, but no. By the way, like in, in all seriousness, like even if the lineup isn't like phenomenal, like I still don't think like the Brewers have had a really good start. But I don't think the Brewers' offense is still all that good. Yes, they've had a good no. start to the season, but I don't I don't expect Brian Anderson to put up MVP type of, type of numbers. Um, like they they still I, you know I, I still don't I like the Phillies bullpen. I think a little more than the Brewers bullpen. I so I I, I don't know, man. Like I I think even if the bats don't uh aren't great this year, I still think they have a good chance just because of the pitching. But. Yeah. I think it'll be close though. I'm not saying the Phillies are running away with a wild card spot. Like it's there, it's definitely not happening. I think if you're a Phillies fan, man, like you're you're this is gonna be down to the wire like it was last year. And I think it's gonna be somewhere between eighty five to eighty nine wins. I, I think, you know, I my prediction was ninety one wins, I think. And it's yeah, right. I think for sure. I think we were similar, um, right right around about a little above ninety. A little above ninety wins for, yeah. for the I, I might have been closer to ninety five, but right. I don't know. Well, that was before the Haskins injury, too, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. It was, like, right before it, too. Yeah. So, all right, let's get uh, get to my next one that we can get to. Uh, I think you have one or two left. One more. Um, yeah, I have one more left. Okay, perfect. Um, And then we'll move on to some other news and notes. Um, So, Sandy Alcantara threw a 100-pitch complete game. Again, I might have to move him up for my honorable mentions, top five in the NL East, to a top five player. Um, You know, because he's proving that last year was no fluke. Um, and he's been a good pitcher since he's been in baseball. Um, but last year obviously had the career year when Desai Young um led the major leagues in complete games last year with six, I believe it was. Um, and that was the most since Chris Sale in 2016. And then before that, the last one was Kershaw in 2014 with six. Um, so my statement here, a question, Nick. Do you think or so basically my statement, I want to know if you think it's an overreaction or uh is it not? Sandy Alcantara will once again win the Cy Young this year in National League Cy Young, and he'll have more complete games than he did last season. So he has to do both. Right. You're he has to Cy do Young both. and most, most complete games. And most likely he has most complete games. He's probably going to get the Cy Young again. This is tough. Oh, this is – you put me on the spot here. Sorry. I'm going to go not an overreaction. A not an wow. over. I Sandy is I Sandy's legit man. I I love watching him pitch. I mean, he is ridiculous. I 
the f- like seeing guys go deep into ball games like him, like you don't see it as much it. anymore. Oh, it's it, it, it's fantastic. His stuff is is ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. the it's, it's a shame he's on the Marlins, who are going absolutely nowhere anytime. Out in the Phillies right now. Yeah, yeah, right. Now. I know it's we're a weekend. We're a weekend. <laughs> like like the Rays aren't going to be the, have the best record. The Marlins for sure will not be where they are. Right now, what are they at? They what do they have? They're three and four. They're three and four in second. I think place. yeah, them and the Mets are three and four. Second in place. Yeah, no, they, they, I you know I the Marlins aren't gonna be be contenders at all at, at any point this year. But uh, yeah, I, I I don't think that's an overreaction. I, I think Sandy Alcantara he he's a top five player in this division. Francisco um, should not be an honorable mention. I mean the guy's <laughs> stuff's ridiculous. He's young. Um, and you know, he can go deep in the ball games and you can't, you don't see that that often, um, he can get guys out. He can strike people out. I mean, he, he can literally do it all. He is everything you want in a pitcher and the Marlins. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think that's an overreaction. I, I really think he could go to the distance a ton this year, more than he did last year. And then he's going to be right in that Cy Young voting again. It's so it, we're looking not it'd an be, overreaction. It would have to be seven. It would have to be seven. So it'd be se- yeah, seven. Yeah. I, I could so years. see him doing that. Man. Very, very possible. I, I, I hope you're right, man. I hope you're right. Start against the Rockies here, you know, a start a start yeah. against you have to play everybody, right? So you gotta go against right. Washington, the Rockies. I don't know. Like you know, you go against what Kansas City, Baltimore. I mean, you got a shot, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, sure. I, I I will say, man, I I want to. I'm like in the middle. If I, I know it's pick. so tough, it's close. I know, it's. I'll say it's an overreaction just because I, I had to see it first. If I had to see somebody go to at least seven or eight complete games, right. it hasn't been done in a while. Yeah. So I'm gonna say it's an overreaction. Maybe right. he wins Cy Young, but I, to do both, it's, it's really hard. All right, give me your last one here before my last on. one. All right, this is a fun one. Yes. So the other, I, I believe it was Tuesday night. Uh, I was looking. Um, it might have been might have been very similar to um, to some other games this year. So against uh, the Cleveland Guardians, the Oakland A's had 3,400 fans in the stands. Um, overreaction or not an overreaction? The A's will average over 10,000 for this season. They averaged just under 10,000 last season for uh, for reference. They average so the, you're, you're asking me, will they have over 10,000 fans per game? At, will they average? Yes. Will they average over 10,000? fans per game this season you're saying they will average yes okay o- overreaction over- or not an overreaction overreaction they they're they're not they, they, this no one i mean dude they're gonna be going to, they're going to vegas right I, they, they, I mean they should they should i mean at this point i i hope i'm wrong because like i don't know even though like the coliseum kind of sucks like it's not a beautiful <laughs> venue there's a lot of like history there like maybe they should just get a new stadium i don't know uh, maybe I'm just like a, a money ball I, geek or I whatever. Will, like I will point this out. They had twenty six thousand for the opener. Well, good for them. But this was Tuesday. This is a random <laughs> Tuesday night in April. They had thirty four. <laughs> they all out there to see uh, who who the hell did the A's even have? Sean they don't have Christian Pache around. anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, what, who the heck did I can't even I, I can't think. I don't who know. Who cares? Who cares? Does, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, is Mark Mulder still there? Barry Zito. <laughs> Barry Zito. You oh know? Lord. Where's uh, where's uh, Eric Chavez? <laughs> are the ghosts of uh, I, you know Eric Chavez with the Mets? I think isn't he with the Mets? I don't know. He's like a, I, he's, like a was... he's like a bench coach. Yeah. Oh, is he? He's a bench I'm coach for them. Sure, Eric Look Chavez. It. Yeah, I like that. Eric Chavez. I don't like yeah. Eric Chavez anymore. So, so they're so it's an overreaction. They're not going to go over ten. That is correct. Okay, I'm with you. I think they go under. They'll probably yeah. go eight this year. Yeah, it's like you never see fans there. It's brutal, man. Yeah. There's more in minor league games. Yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, dude. I know. Let's uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll wrap up with uh, some news and notes with the Grayson Rodriguez, Jordan Walker. Um, I do uh, because you know I, I have to go see the Air movie soon, Nick. So you are, you're, yeah, dude. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm I am jealous. I am. You jealous. should be. You should be. I'm not gonna. That. I'm not gonna sit here and like. No, nah, yeah, you should be. All right. All right, then. You're, I am jealous. Yeah, I, I will admit it. I will admit it. I'll give you your props. You can gloat all you want. I'm jealous because I I'm going to see it hopefully next week. Okay. Who are you gonna go see it with your girlfriend? Probably. Yeah, that's okay. what we'll do. I, I'm gonna drag her to air because apparently I'm getting dragged to the new Barbie movie that comes out. Which <laughs> <That's> fun. 
I, I don't know if that's gonna as, happen. As a single man, I don't have to deal with this right now. So I'll uh I'll I'll I'll, I'll rake this in while I can, baby. I'll rake it in with my Angels jersey on. We're gonna see how that one goes. I don't. I it's, yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. We'll good see. luck. We'll good see luck at seeing Barbie. God damn. All right. Uh, let's <laughs> let's talk about the uh, the new minor league CBA, Nick. Yes. Um, again, I want you to speak on this a little more than uh, me because you're more of a minor league expert than I am. Uh, but the MLB ratifies, this according to Mark, Mark Feinstein, uh, MLB ratifies new CBA for minor league players. Um, MLB owners voted unanimously to ratify a new CBA with minor league players on Monday, um, a move that will not only increase salaries, but also improve lifestyle and medical care for minor leaguers. Um, they, the minor league players voted to approve the new five-year CBA, the first of its kind for the minors last week. I mean, this is big, man. This yeah. is big for uh, minor league players. I hope this isn't. Oh, this is only the first step uh, to getting even more money because they deserve uh, true living wages. But this is definitely a huge step for minor league baseball. Nick, huge step. Uh, minor leaguers uh, have always been kind of just you know thrown under the rug and never had you know good good uh, living wages. Good. I mean, it's you. You might as well just be working at McDonald's making more money. To be honest, like if we're being Make real. way more. Yeah, make- it's insane. So, I mean, this is great for baseball, man. Great for baseball, great for minor leaguers. Um, you know, great to see uh, the MLB and MILB, you know, come to a, to a term there. Yeah, when I when I saw this come to fruition, um, I, I put it in in our little rundown that we have for, for each show. Um, I think this is extremely important. Um, just to kind of put this into perspective, right? So, um, if you go to the rookie levels, um, it, just an example – for the Braves Florida Complex League, right? Their pay at first, like before the before the new CBA, um, for these players was forty eight hundred dollars annually. Awful. That'll be moved up to nineteen thousand eight hundred. Thank God. I, I mean that that it's it's a it's a big it's a big um increase, right? So there, there, this article, I believe, it is on SB Nation. Uh, they're using the Braves as an example, right? Just um, for what each each um, minor league, uh, high A, double A, um, uh, single A, triple A, you know, all of them, right? Um, so single A, where uh, before they in high A, they were each paid a eleven thousand per season, that has now been increased to twenty six thousand, and triple A went from seventeen thousand five hundred to thirty five eight hundred, and this is. A, I guess they're using the example of the Braves here. So mm-hmm. it went from 17 to 35. I mean, that's, it's a significant Gigantic. jump. Um, and, and another thing is, um, you know, obviously the pay was a God awful. Um, but also, I mean, living arrangements too, when you're not being able to make money, I mean, and the living arrangements were, were putrid. I mean, they, they were absolutely putrid um, for, for minor leaguers. I mean, they could barely afford rent anywhere. Um, so now um, they're going to be, uh, boarded, uh, they'll receive a bedroom, they'll receive housing and transportation, right? Um, some of these players in the minors now um, that'll be paid for by the organizations, right? Um, this, this is this is huge. Um, and they'll also be able to be, I, I think there was there was a thing in there um, that they'll be able to have to have food or something or and have more cooks so players can have meals um, because they weren't able to eat well. Like, I mean, guys were having, I guess, basically – they were having, I, I, I guess, tasty cakes pretty much on on the bus as like the, as like as lunch and dinner. <laughs> um, it, so yeah, so teams will. So here's here's one of the things that came out of it. Teams will be providing players meals, which will be overseen by a joint clubhouse nutrition committee. Um, so that this is a this is a gigantic step in the right direction for minor league minor mm-hmm. league players. They're 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 getting housing. They're getting an increase in pay. They're they're getting um, meals. I mean, it was tough. It, it's I don't think people realize because all the millions of dollars the pros make, right? How little minor league players get respected. I mean, they they don't get anything. Um, the top draft picks, you know, they'll they'll get all the noise. But what about the other guys trying to make it, right? Trying to provide for a family, trying to make it into the major leagues. They don't get paid, and they they don't have housing. They don't have great meals. And, you know, some guys during the off season, instead of training to get better at their craft, to try and get to that next level, they'd have to take second and third jobs mm-hmm. to, to provide Horrible. just for themselves to live. So 
um great step uh I, you know you still want to see more but i mean yeah definitely want to this see is more. this is ginormous um seeing the minor league players get this so yeah um uh, great, great great to see it get done um so yeah i think it was i think it was important we brought it up yeah no you you, you spoke for me man um i think it's great for like like you said great for minor leaguers because you know everything that i've heard you know over the last you know five to ten years a lot of stuff hasn't you know hadn't had kind of been thrown under the rug uh, about minor leaguers it's like ah oh, whatever um but no they, they you know these guys are we're not making any money um again i'd like to say whatever then this is the cba is until it just it, it's until 2027 um so i would like to, in the next cba for them to increase it even more but the step in the right direction all right nick let's um let's wrap up with uh some news and notes um i thought it was great to see grayson rodriguez Ooh. uh he won against J- jacob de grom I thought there were two good things there. Uh, I, I always think it's good for baseball when Jacob DeGrom's healthy and being Jacob DeGrom. So DeGrom was phenomenal in that game, had 11 strikeouts through six innings. Um, Grayson Rodriguez on the other side, five innings, uh, just a couple of earned runs. Like, good good to see for the Orioles, man. Him and D.L. Yeah. Hall, top of the rotation possibly in the future, along with Adley Rushman and Gunnar Henderson. That's the future of the organization right there. Yeah, what are we talking about? The the O's don't they don't have any pitching. Kyle Gibson was their opening day starter. Um, so to see Rodriguez get called up, I mean, yeah, he needed to. Um, he, I got to see him a little bit in the minor leagues. Um, he's got really good stuff. I, I think uh, he's on his way to being a really good pitcher um, in this league. Um, and yeah, I, I think for for the O's, I mean, they, they're 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 on their way to developing some a lot of young talent. I mean, Adley Rutschman. Um, Gunnar Henderson, Grace Rodriguez. I mean, this is this is going to be their core, right? This is going to be the core of, uh, of the Baltimore Orioles. I mean, they have, I, I, they do have the top ranked um, farm system in all of baseball. So, I mean, yeah, th- these guys are going to start to come up now. Um, they they've drafted well. I mean, they've been bad for so long. Uh, this is what happens when you get top draft picks. You're able to get some decent players, and um, they have they have the catcher of the future. And as you mentioned before, you think going to be the best catcher in baseball at some point overtaking JT real Muto. Which, Maybe this which, year. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's, let's slow. I get opening I, day. I, what do you have? Six hits on opening day. Yeah. He had like 25 hits on opening day. Basically. I get, I, I get it. I get it. Listen, I'm, I'm a You're big Adley Adley hater. Now? Are you Adley, Adley, hater? Adley hater? I love I Adley hater. rush. Oh, nah. give me a get out of here. Yeah, this I was, why, you're oh, just trying to defend see, JT. Real this is what, this is why I'm the voice of reason. I JT still the oh best catcher. God, in you said that Adley's already. On his You're way. not the voice of reason. Adley's on his You're the voice of treason. We want treason against you. No, I love the, I'm going to go to an O's game this year. Mark it down. I will be at one at some point and I'm going I will to prove, I'm, I'm going to get an Adley jersey and prove how much of an Adley fan I am more than you because Adley Rushman is on his way to being the best catcher in baseball just not this year okay you're wrong <laughs> uh all right that's also uh Jordan Walker uh has had a great start for the St. Louis Cardinals first thing um, yeah first thing uh yesterday the day before I forget which was um it's his first home run. It was a line drive shot against Atlanta. Um, he's now hitting the first week, 333, batting average, 360 on base, 542 slug, uh, a 147 OPS plus. Um, I mean, he's been great. I mean, it's great to see, man. He's, what, 19, 20 years old? I mean, Jordan Walker, uh, he's been great. I love it. I love seeing these prospects play well man especially at a young age man just like oh, when soto came up in acuna and all these the guys. best man it is the best when the young guys come up the one the guys you've been following for a little while oh see seeing walker his first dinger seeing adley come up now grayson rodriguez seeing all these guys come up man it's it's great it's great for the game and um you know i hope hope hopefully major league baseball can finally learn market these guys market these guys these are studs these are studs Market these guys correctly. That'll help grow the game as well. Um, start them at a young age, and just let people know who these guys are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and let's uh, just a couple of more things. Um, we got to talk about a few of these things. Uh, I'm sure you saw the Tyler O'Neill, uh, Ali Marmol. I, all the way. By the way, I didn't realize Ali Marmol is like 36. He's young. He's a young manager. Holy crap. I didn't realize he was there. He looks a little older, but Tyler O'Neill, uh, I believe a couple of days ago, um, does not run out, uh, or doesn't, uh, hustle to home plate gets thrown out pretty easily by Ronald Acuna jr. Um, ends up costing the Cardinals uh, a run, especially in a, in a tight spot in the, in the game against the Braves. Um, and yeah, I guess it basically, uh, Marmol comes out publicly 
and says like, yeah, we benched him because of that whole ordeal um, because he didn't run it out. Basically saying like, oh, what's up the type of culture we have here? I don't know, man. Like the, a lot of the stuff that I've been hearing is that like this never should have gone public. This and and then we had O'Neill fired back, pretty much saying like, um, this this isn't the player that I've been. You know, I've I've you know I worked hard to get to where I am. Blah 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 through the minors. Um, basically, and he also said like uh, this never should have gotten public. But they're taking shots yeah. at Marmol, taking shots at your manager. I mean, that's not a good look. Now, I mean, I I think there was talk about the the Cardinals possibly trading him in the off season. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like I, I was listening to uh, Trevor Plouffe and Chris Rose today on the baseball today. And like, they were both talking about like, if you're Arenado, if you're Goldschmidt, like that's not how you want the clubhouse to be right now, especially for a team that's trying to win a division title there and, and yeah. a world series title in St. Louis. Yeah. I mean, they're contenders. Um, pro- probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't be out there in the media. I mean, doing all this, I mean, it's never a great look. It, it divides a locker room, right? Um, I didn't, he miss time last year. I, I feel like he had, oh, he had some, yeah, he, 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 he had a lot. Yeah. He missed, he missed some time last year too. I, I remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not, not a great look. Um, and not a great start to the year. You don't want to already have drama in the clubhouse already. If you're the Cardinals. games into the year. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're coming off, um, a tough wild card round loss last year to the Phillies. Um, who came out of nowhere. I mean, remember the first game they, they blew, they blew a lead uh, late in the game. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, this is not how you want to come out and start a season already with drama in the clubhouse. Um, and this is a team that is expected to compete for a division, compete for a world series. I, I they're, if, they're not going to mince words. They, they are contenders and um, yeah. you know, they won a division last year and you know, they're, they're trying to compete. I mean, this, you don't want this to, you don't want this to linger. Hope maybe it'll get cleared up quicker than we think, but you don't want this to linger throughout a season because it, this could, this could turn, this could turn the tide a little bit if you're the Cardinals. So they have to yeah. be careful here. Yeah. All right. And last thing uh, before we go, actually, I'm going to all mention real quick, Elvis Andrews, recorded his 2000th hit uh, oh. for the, for the White Sox, I believe is overnight is the White Sox. Yep. Um, he got his 2000th hit against the Giants. Uh, the that? that was yesterday, so good for him. Um, I, I think uh, Elvis Andrews had a pretty uh, underrated career, so good for Elvis Andrews, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I like seeing like seeing these guys get some of these older guys, right? Getting up there, uh, in age and, and getting some of these milestones. We saw Pool Holes last year do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a little different it's when cool. Pool's got yeah, a 700. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I know, I'm, what I'm just saying. saying, like, like seeing guys, yeah, but you're the voice of marks. reason, so go ahead. Just seeing guys hit these marks. I am the voice of reason on this show because I got to reel you back in thinking Adley's going to be the best catcher in baseball this year. He's on his way. I can't wait till like Adley just like destroys Real Muto in every single offensive category. All right. All right. So I don't even know why I'm rooting for that. I shouldn't be rooting for that. (laughs) Um, Last thing. uh, I want to get this crap out of the way. This was so like, I don't know. Like, okay, you can hate on Tatis for the old steroids thing and stuff like that. Like, not great, not a great look. And, you know, he did it. He did his time with the suspension. He's going to still doing his time technically with the suspension. But he played in a minor league game the other night, hits a missile off this clown named Cade McClure. Um, and I don't know. Like, Tati hit the home run. I don't, didn't look like he really, maybe he picked it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like, he doesn't, he matter. rounds the, he rounds the bases and he does his whole thing at third base where he kind of like does the, like he hops over. I don't know what he does to what he, whatever you want to call it. It's like celebration. Um, and he gets booed after that. The, the fans boo him. Like, that's what they're going to do this year. Cause they're going to boo Tatis, Tatis because of the, the steroid stuff. Fine. Um, but um, now on Twitter, someone like someone tweeted out Nick that like, Oh, Tatis takes a minor leaguer deep or whatever. Yeah. And then Caden yeah. McClure like clapped back and like, uh, you mean uh, a cheater hits a a, a a home run off the uh, off the minor leaguer? I'm like, dude, what did you? You look like a clown. I'm pretty sure he deleted the tweet since then. And good. Um, I mean, I, I hate no. that we're giving this. No, clown no, no, not good. Out. Leave it up. Leave it up. Leave it up. What's deleting gonna do? It's already out there. Leave it up. Stand by your tweet. Stand by it. Yeah, that's you know. yeah. I guess you're right. <laughs> but I guess it was a, I guess it was a bad look for him to keep it up. But I mean, we all know we all have it now. I just think he looks like such a clown. Like the guy didn't even. I I I guess I would understand it from a certain perspective if maybe if he pimped the home run off. Even then, yeah. like he beat you, bro. Like I mean, 
you look like a you look like a an idiot d- well, doing that on like i mean yeah. i don't know man I, I, yeah i mean it's it's really stupid i mean it's just the age we live in now i mean guys are gonna take the social media for things not not every player but the, you know some players i mean this is across all sports now um you're gonna yeah. see guys take things over the top i mean it's just it's it's petty it's silly why why even bother you know you know he's gonna go up to the majors still it's not gonna matter we you know how, how long have steroids been in baseball you know if you think he's a cheater fine you know he's he's still signed a 14 year 340 million dollar contract a couple years ago he's just, he's on a rehab stint he's gonna be back up with the big club and no one's gonna remember his name so you know whatever <laughs> i mean i yeah. he's, a, he's a, you know I, it's just, don't, there's no need for it. There's just no need for it. So yeah, I mean, and, and Tatis is going to come back up and he's going to mash. Like I already know. He yeah. Is. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to happen. It's it's just, you know, it's just how it goes. Just how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, screw this guy. Let's be real. Uh, <laughs> there was the respect and no disrespect at the same time. Yeah. Um, but leave the tweet up. I'm, I'm all for leaving the tweet up. But you know, we, 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 we delete it for whatever. it's, it's already up. It's already cool. up. Everyone already saw it. Leave it up. Stand by it. You know, you, you whatever. Screw that. Uh, Tatis, hopefully we see you back soon, Mashin. All right, that's going to do it for today, tonight's show. Uh, you know, I'm going to go see Air. You're going to go see Barbie by yourself. No, I'm not going to see Bar- – no, I'm going to see Air. But, I'm like, the deal is I'm probably going to have to see Barbie too. Cause I'm, okay, I'm so you're make- going to see Barbie, right? Not yet. I don't think it's out yet. Like, when, I don't think it comes out but for a while. And you're going to see it. I No, no, I said I, I probably will have to go see it. Okay, you, that's, you're saying that's not a I definite. Said. That's not a hundred percent. That's like ninety five percent. I think you low key want to. I think you Dude, want to. I, I'd rather. I, I'm not even gonna say. What, what would you rather? rather? No, go <laughs> ahead. You have to say it now. I'd rather do so many other things than, than go see Barbie. All right, just, Nick, listen. I gotta go, bro. I know. I have no more. You have fun. I, you have fun. Yeah, I have no more time for you and your 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 things that. Uh, My shenanigans. Know. I know. Yeah, shenanigans. Uh, Whatever. I don't. I don't know what else to call it. There's a lot of names I could call it. Um, I'm gonna keep them to myself because I'm a respectful man. Um, so Nick, again, great show today, bud. That's gonna do it for us. Nick, take us out here, bud. You never take us out. Have a YouTube. I'll take us, us out. out, everyone. Us out. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. You know, it's below. It's right here. It's flying by. There it goes. Uh, make sure to follow us on all platforms. Make sure to listen on Spotify. Make sure to watch us on YouTube. The Shift, Nick Earnshaw, Francisco Rojas. We're out.